Today is going to be 7-2, and we're going to be looking at transformations and basic graphs. So we're still going to look at the seven different basic graphs that we talked about the other day. We're going to apply rigid transformations to functions, which more specifically we're going to look at reflections, and then we're going to apply scaling transformations to the graphs. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a reflection about the x-axis. Now this occurs when I have a negative in front of my function. So to give an example here, let's say if I have my parent function f of x equals x squared. Now if I have a negative in front of my function, that's going to become negative x squared. So notice this statement reflected about the x-axis. Now going back to this, this f of x is y's, so it's a negative in front of my y. And so all of my positive y's are going to negative, which is why you get that type of reflection. Now when we get a reflection about the y-axis, we have a negative in front of our input. So notice if I have f of x equals the square root of x, so there's the parent graph for that. And so if I have a negative there, this statement will get reflected about the y-axis, and so I'm going to get this here. Now one thing just to note, that if we're going to graph it, we need to have it as x of negative input. And we're going to see that very shortly in a couple of examples, why I have it in that phrase. Now if we ever get a mathematical statement saying, hey, this is what you need to do, you have to do it in the order that it's going to give it to you. So if this is my parent graph for 2 to the x power, if I'm shifting 2 to the right, that means I'm shifting this 2 to the right, and I'm going to shift 3 down, and so 1, 2, 3, and so I have this new dot here. I'm going to get this value here, and then my new graph will do something like that. Now it says reflected about the y, or sorry, the x-axis. So if this is going to get reflected, then this is going to get reflected up here. So this is going to become this. This dot is going to get reflected, and I'll use a different color. So that gets reflected up, and so it's actually going to do this. And so as you can see, I get that type of reflection, and so kind of comparing it, we can take a look at it there. And so this would actually be the mathematical statement referencing that one. So I shifted two to the right, three down, and then the entire thing was reflected. Now looking at a few examples here, what if I just wanted to take this parent graph and graph it? So I have to look for different elements of it. So the first, I can say that this is a reflection over my x. And then I'm going to shift over 4 and up 1. So my parent graph, if I wanted to take a look at that, my parent graph looks something like this. I should always do my reflections first. So I'm going to reflect it. And in this case, it's a reflection over the x-axis. We just talked about that. So there's my reflection. Now that I have my reflection, now I can apply any transformations. It's going to move over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and move up 1. And so I want to draw the image of what my reflection was. And so this green part, that's going to be my answer. So the first step that I did here was the first thing is I drew my parent graph. The second step is I applied a reflection. So I said that because of this negative here, it's a reflection over the x. So this reflected down to here. Then step three, I applied a transformation. So this shifted over 4 and up 1 because of this. And then so I was able to draw the shape of what my reflection was based upon that. Example number two, this parent graph here, this is going to be an exponential. So I know that I have an asymptote here. And my starting point is there. And so I have a shape that looks like that. So now dissecting all the information, the first thing I need to look at is reflections. So I have a reflection over the x, and I have a reflection over the y, and I need to write this as negative input. So I have to factor out that negative there. So I do have a reflection over the y because of that. So let's apply those reflections. The first, a reflection over the x, so this is going to reflect down to here, and it's going to do that. And then it's going to get reflected about the y-axis, and so this is going to move over here, this is going to move over there, so you get this. 
So that's that light green there, that's going to be the final image of all the reflections. And so now I can apply my transformation. Well, because this is a minus here, this is going to move over to and down to. So from this dot here, it's going to move over to and down to. And so that's the new dot. My asymptote went down two spaces. And so now drawing that direction, that's going to be an image of my graph. So now we're going to talk about uh, non-rigid transformations. Now these non-rigid transformations, they're going to distort the graph by stretching and shrinking. Now if you remember with my standard form equations that I originally talked about, this A that I have in front in my standard form, that's going to be the C that's in front of my function here. Now if you ever have a C, or in this case A, being multiplied in front of your function, we call that a vertical stretch or shrink. Now it's a vertical stretch if C is bigger than 1. It's a shrink if C is between 0 and 1. Now the way that I want you to remember is just think of this circle like a rubber band. And let's say that that rubber band's my graph. If I'm in the vertical and I'm stretching it, meaning I pull on the rubber band, what's going to happen is it's going to look like that. It looks like I'm stretching it that way. If I take that rubber band and I am shrinking it, meaning I get a push on that, that's going to look more like this. So just understand that the vertical stretching and shrinking, you're literally either pulling on the graph in the vertical or you're shrinking it on the graph in the vertical. And we'll see how that looks like momentarily. And then for the horizontal transformations, okay, this C here, it's going to be a lot more clear once we go over trig functions. But for now, if you have a C multiplied in front of your X or your input, that's going to be a horizontal shrink. Now notice they're inverses. So just note that when we do abstract functions, you're going to do the opposite in terms of how you're going to multiply or divide it. And so it's a horizontal shrink if it's bigger than 1, and it's a horizontal stretch if it's between 0 and 1. So just remember, rigid transformations, the shifts and reflections, they only change the position of the graph. Literally, one value for x translating to a different value for x one value for y translating to a different value for y. Whereas the non-rigid transformations, okay, you're taking the graph and you're stretching or shrinking it, and so um, the way that it transforms is the actual shape is going to be changing. So our, let's look at how this is going to work out. So this x minus 3, because this is a rigid transformation, notice that it changed the position. That graph just moved over. But now this 3, that 3 is in front, right? This is c times my f of x. And so that c is going to be a vertical. And then because 3 is bigger than 1, it's going to be a vertical stretch. Now imagine if I pull on this graph like it was a rubber band. Notice how it got like thinner. Okay, It's stretched in the vertical. Now all this means is that my f of x's, or my y values, grew three times as quickly. So if I said c is greater than 1, here's a stretch. So 5x squared, right, because that's bigger than 1. So notice that if I pulled on it, that's how I get the stretch there. If I said c is between 0 and 1, this is going to be a vertical shrink. If I take this graph and I push on it, Okay, notice it got wider on it. And so that's why it says if I'm like pushing on the graph, right, it's going to get flattened just like that rubber band example. If I want to look at a horizontal transformation here, if I said C is bigger than 1, that means that I'm going to have like 5x squared. Okay, so all of that's being squared. Now we're affecting the horizontal, so if I push on the rubber band in the horizontal, I'm shrinking it notice it's going to get more narrow. And it has that opposite effect to it. So because we said like this horizontal shrink looks just like a vertical stretch. And if that's the assessment that you're making in your mind, you're, you're, you're correct. You know, they have that inverse relationship. Uh, here it's as if I'm pulling on it. 
So if I were to pull on it, notice it got much wider. So let's look how this is actually going to work together because even though I can recognize that it has a vertical or horizontal stretch or shrink, just know that when we graph it, just by picking correct values, it's going to naturally work itself out. So my parent graph looks something like this. Now if I were to apply any reflection, I do have a reflection over the x. And so this is going to reflect over the x-axis. So I have that. And then now applying my transformation, it's going to move over 2 and down 1. So this is going to move over 2 and down 1. And so I can draw kind of like that pre-image of what it would look like. Okay, so my graph should look something like that. But now if I wanted to do my stretch or shrink, I should plug in values. So if I plug in negative 1, Okay, that's going to give me negative 2 times uh, square root of 1, which is just 1, minus 1. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So that's going to give me negative 3. And if I plug in, let's say, 2, that's going to give me negative 5. And so graphing this, I'm going to get this graph here. Let's look at another one. I know that my parent graph, this is going to be cubic. So it's going to have this type of image here. And so I have two reflections, reflection over the x, and I have a reflection over the y. But I need to put in this in the correct form, so I factor out the negative, and so I get x minus 3, so I can do my correct translations. And so now doing this, if I did the reflection, well, the first the reflection over the x, Okay, so I get that. Well, now if I reflect it over the y, it's going to give me the same thing. So having said that, I just end up getting the same exact original graph. So now that I have the same exact original graph applying those two reflections, now I need to apply the rigid transformation. So this is going to move over 3, and it's going to move down 1. So 1, 2, 3, down 1. And so plotting the original, it'll look something like this. You just pick points. And I'm just mainly doing this so you can see how the stretching and stuff fixes. OK, so it looks something like that. So now if I plot points like 2, negative 1 fourth times negative 2 plus 3 cubed minus 1, Okay, so that's going to give me 1 cubed, which is 1 times 1, negative 1 fourth minus 1. So that gives me negative 5 fourths. So that means that my point is going to be negative 5 fourths, which is going to be approximately right here. If I plugged in uh, positive 1, that's going to give me 2 cubed times negative 1 fourth. So that's 8 times negative 1 fourth, which is negative 2 minus 1. So that gives me negative 3. And so if I did that to all these points here, you're going to get something that's going to look like this. Now notice that looks just like if I recognize what this is, okay, this is a vertical shrink. And so it's as if I took this graph and I pushed on it, right? I shrank on that graph, and so that's why it flattened out here and here. It looked like it flattened out more. Now at last, we're going to take a look at a few abstract functions. So if I wanted to say my f of x is going to go to 2 times f of x, or I can say g of x equals 2 times f of x, however I want to look at it. Now what this is trying to interpret is it's saying, if f of x are my y's, I'm taking 2 times my y's. So that means that I took all the information here, I labeled the x's, here's my points, here are my y's. Well, times 2, that's how I get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And so I get a new set of points here. And so plotting those new set of points, notice if I took this graph and I stretched it, I would get this one. And so that 2f of x, that created that vertical stretch. Including of today's lesson, well, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about transformations again with our different parent graphs, and any graph for that matter.
but we focused more on reflections and any form of vertical stretch, vertical shrink, horizontal stretch, and horizontal shrink depending on what that looks like. So I want to hear from you guys. What type of transformation should be applied first? And then also, what's the difference between negative f of x and f of negative x in terms of our types of transformations? This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.